Hey guys, we are on day 197 of our Bible reading plan, and today we are reading in the book of Isaiah, chapters 13 through 17. Chapter 13 is going to give us a prophecy against Babylon. We read in this chapter, the Lord says, I have commanded those I've prepared for battle. I have summoned my warrior to carry out my wrath. Those who rejoice in my triumph, and we read that the Lord is bringing destruction on Babylon. It is going to be fierce and terrible in that day. The imagery of, is of a massive army that is coming against them, waging war, and it's, it's terrifying. The outcome for Babylon <laughs> is not good. God is going to completely destroy it. It will never again be a city. And then in chapter 14, we read about the future hope of Israel. We read about the deliverance of Israel from Babylon. Verse 1 tells us, The Lord will have compassion on Jacob once again. He will choose Israel and will settle them in their own land. Foreigners will join them and unite with descendants of Jacob. And Israel will taunt the king of Babylon in that day. The Lord is going to crush the Assyrian army. We read that in verse 24. Then in verse 28, there's a prophecy against the Philistines. And so here in the middle of all of this impending doom and judgment, there is hope for Israel. Israel is going into captivity. Babylon is going to come in and oppress them. But the Lord will one day deliver them from the Babylonians, and God is going to bring the Babylonians low for what they do and their treatment of his people. Then in chapter 15, we're going to read a prophecy against Moab. But what's interesting about this one is that Moab repents. They cover their head in ash. They go down in sackcloth. They cry out to the Lord for protection, that he would decide their future and their fate. And it's really interesting. The Lord says that he will leave a remnant in Moab. So his judgment is coming. The hope for Moab is that there will be a remnant left. And in chapter 17, we have a prophecy against Damascus and really all of the cities that join together, including Ephraim, to come against Israel. God is going to bring judgment on them for that. He's going to bring these cities, these nations low. Even Jacob is going to fade. But again, God has this promise for a future hope for a remnant in Jacob. And it's going to to take all of this destruction, all of this judgment, for Israel to finally forsake their other gods, for Israel to finally turn back, for Jacob to finally turn back to his God, for this people to finally come back and repent and return to their Lord. And I know that as we're reading through these chapters in Isaiah, it can seem overwhelming, this impending doom, this judgment that's coming against these nations. But what the Lord is really doing here is he's removing his favor. He's giving these nations over to the paths that they have chosen. And he's doing that because he knows what it's going to take for his people to return to him, for his people to come back, to worship him wholeheartedly. And at the same time, there is hope for them. He is going to continually promise to leave a remnant. What's really interesting to me as I was reading through this is the remnant that he leaves in Moab. And right in the middle of the judgment and the prophecy that we have against Moab, we also have a bit of a messianic prophecy here. And in verse 5 of chapter 16, it says, In love, a throne will be established in faithfulness. A man will sit on it, one from the house of David, one who in judging seeks justice and speeds the cause of righteousness. And we know that the man who sits on that throne is Jesus Christ. And what's really interesting to me is that it's right here in the prophecy against Moab and who is in the line of Jesus, Boaz, who marries Ruth, a Moabitess, and their son Obed is the father of Jesse, who is the father of David. It's really interesting to me to see the hand of God at work in not just Israel, but in in all of these nations, what he's doing. You know, we, when we read through the account of Ruth, we read that she is a convert. She is someone who says, may your God be my God and your people be my people to her mother-in-law who is an Israelite. And so she follows the God of Jacob. And this one prophecy against Moab, this impending doom, this impending judgment, God is saying he's going to leave a remnant. And also we find here in the middle of their judgment that there is going to be a promise of a Messiah. And it's just such a great reminder to me that God can use 
anyone who's faithful, and he's willing to use anyone who's faithful to further his kingdom, to bring hope, to bring deliverance to his people. And he is going to continue working all of these pieces and all of these threads that he's weaving together throughout this account together in the person of Jesus. And it's just, it's incredible. The long suffering of our God, the patience of our Lord, and the intricate plan that he has for humanity and for ultimately not just Israel's redemption, but the redemption of the whole world. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, We worship a good God who loves us, who patiently is working all things together for the good of those who love him according to his purposes. And we see that here, even in the midst of judgment. So I hope that encourages you. I'd love to hear what you thought of this. So drop a comment in the Bible reading plan, and I'd love to hear how God's speaking to you through this today. Have a great day, guys.